I'll try to keep it a little shorter than normal. But I'm going to give you a little history on Henry Ford and Henry Ford's automobile dealerships as he went through life. Uh, Henry Ford was born July the 30th, 1863, in the Greenville Township around Dearborn, Michigan. He was born the son of a farmer. And as you know, most people that were born on a farm, when they had a son, they knew what their son was going to do. Well, Henry was not going to be a farmer, and he did not mind telling his dad that he wasn't going to be a farmer. Uh, at the age of 13, Henry Ford was given a pocket watch as a gift from his dad. And, uh, and as I say, curiosity killed the cat, and it wasn't long before Henry Ford was taking this watch apart, putting it back together, uh, and he got good at it. By the age of 15, he was taking care of the family, friends, and neighbors' clocks and watches. Uh, his mom passed away, and he said, I love the mother of the farm. I did not like the farm. So when he turned 16, he moved and told his dad, I'm going to Detroit to become a machinist. His dad took him. He got a part-time job being a machinist. And the rest of the time, he filled in as a clock and watch repairman while he was there. Later in a few years, he had to return back to the farm because of some uh, problems and uh, family problems. So while he was there, his dad gave him 67 acres. He said, you know, I'll give him some land and he'll be a, become a farmer. Well, Henry took the land. and. Henry actually uh, hired his first African-American to help him. His name was William Perry. William Perry was the other man on the end of the two-man saw. And Henry Ford had a sawmill. He was, actually took the land. He actually cut the trees off of the land, and he was pocketed in the money, getting ready for his next adventure. While he was at the farm, he got married to his wife. And... Eventually, he moved back to Detroit. Uh, when he moved back to Detroit, he was a uh, machinist, and he got a job working for Detroit Edison Illumination. He did not know Thomas Edison at that time, uh, but he did uh, uh, go back to work there. In 1893, Henry Ford built his first engine. On December the 23rd, uh, 24th, uh, 1893, Henry Ford walks into his wife's kitchen and sits down this engine on the kitchen sink. And you know, as well as I do, on Christmas Eve night, what his wife was probably doing. She was probably in there preparing for the meal the next day. Here comes Henry, sits this engine down, brings the gasoline in, and sets it down on the cabinet and goes ahead and says, I need a little help here. When I uh, ask you, I need you to dip your hand down here on this sponge and pick it up and drip this over the part of the engine. So that's what happened. And they actually cranked this engine on December the 24th, 1893, in the kitchen on the sink. The engine's about, eight, uh, about 18 inches long, about 9 inches tall. Uh, you can read about it on the Internet. Well, after that, Henry's uh, uh, still working at Detroit Edison, and uh, he uh, becomes the chief engineer. Not with schooling, just by his natural instincts and abilities, he became the chief engineer. He was on the clock 24 hours a day, so some days he worked during the day, some days he worked at night. So he had a workshop out back, and he started his next project, and he built his first automobile, uh, there's a picture of it on the back wall there it's called a quadricycle. It has four bicycle tires on it. Uh, it has a buggy seat. It has uh, uh, no, no uh, brakes and no reverse. <laughs> it has a tiller for steering. But Henry Ford built this on June the 4th, 1896 at 4 o'clock in the morning. Henry Ford goes out. And he's working on this, I guess, through the night, and he decides it's time to take it outside. Well, 
he either didn't measure correctly or something. It was the door was too small. He had to break the side out of the building to get the uh, quadricycle out. So at four o'clock in the morning, you know what the, all the noise that's making. Then he takes it outside and cranks it up. And you know the dogs are barking and the chickens are squawking and you know the neighbors are all upset by now. But Henry Ford cranks this thing up and drives it on June the 4th, 1896. And then after that, he had to go to the city and get permission to drive it. He had to get someone that would either run in front of him or ride a bicycle waving a flag. And every time he drove it, they would say, well, here comes Henry and his crazy contraption again. <laughs> Later on, in about 1899, Henry Ford quits Edison Illumination and starts his first automobile company called Detroit uh, Automobile Company. Henry Ford uh, starts making delivery vans. There are pictures of them on the internet. They're a little, uh, tall, narrow little thing. Henry made approximately 20 of them and went bankrupt. And so that was his first company. And then after that, Henry gets more backers and starts uh, getting uh, more support. He starts his other uh, manufacturing company, automobile company called the Henry Ford Company. Well, Henry Ford is busy at this time making race cars. Henry Ford built his first race car there and it was uh, called the Sweepstakes. It, uh, uh, had an engine in it, 537 cubic inches, and produced 76 horsepower. I mean, 26 horsepower, 26 horsepower. And then he got into uh, uh, talking to a guy named Alexander Winston. Alexander Winston and him got together and decided to have a race. Well, Alexander Winston's car did have 76 horsepower, and they decided to run on a one-mile track 10 laps. Well, of course, Henry Ford fell behind uh, on the race and was losing. Alexander Winston's car had overheating problems. He fell out of the race. Henry came back and won the race. That is the only race that Henry Ford is, uh, uh, has ever raced and one that he's been uh, told of. He did run some land speed records. But he did build a couple of more race cars called the 999 and the Red Devil. Barney Oldfield and some other drivers drove for him. Uh, so he was uh, still into racing. Uh, while we're on the racing, in 1911, Henry Ford went to the uh, Indianapolis 500, took a Model T. They would not let him run it because it was 1,000 pounds too light. They said, you got to add 1,000 pounds. Henry Ford was mad, disgusted, left. Never went back to the Indianapolis 500 until Ford and Miller went back in 1935. But while this is going on, Henry Ford's got an automobile company that's sitting over here and he's not making any cars. And investors have got money that they're using to not make money. So they called in a guy named Henry Leland. Henry Leland was a gentleman that was in machining and stuff. Henry Leland came in to appraise the automobile company and he thought it was a good place. Well, Henry Leland had developed a one cylinder engine that he had been trying to sell Buick and Oldsmobile. So they saw it as a good time to, hey, let me do this and let's just keep the company. So they agreed. They give Henry Ford approximately $900 give him his name back and a few of his sketches that he had brought out, kicked him out of the door, said, you're out. So Henry Ford lost his second automobile company. Well, Henry Leland actually kept that company and they called it Cadillac Motor Company. And Henry Leland ran the Cadillac Motor Company until 1908, and that's when it became General Motors. And General Motors bought it from Henry Leland. Well, Henry Leland, being a machinist and stuff, he couldn't stay out of stuff very long. 
So it wasn't long before he started working on the V-12 for airplane engines and stuff like that. Then he started Leland Lincoln and started making automobiles. Well, in 1921, uh, the opportunity arose. Uh, Estel, Ford, Henry Ford's son, uh, found out it was for sale. And uh, I'm sure Henry had a little bit to do with it because I'm sure Henry Ford hadn't forgot Henry Leland kicked him out. So in 1921, Henry Ford and uh, Ford uh, people bought Lincoln, and that's how Lincoln became part of Ford. But after Henry Ford got kicked out of the Henry Ford uh, Motor Company, it wasn't probably a little over a year. He had more money, more supporters, and he was back into what we know of today as the Ford Motor Company. The Ford Motor Company uh, started out in 1903. Henry Ford started his, making his first automobile. It was called uh, Model A, and he made it in 1903. And if you look at a 1903, three Cadillac and a 1903 Ford, there's a lot of resemblances in the body, but the engines are different. The 1903 uh, Ford is a opposed engine, like a Volkswagen, and it's chain driven, and it had two seats on it. And you ask, when did options come available? Options came available, 1903 for the Ford Motor Company. If you wanted four seats, for an extra hundred dollars, you could get two more seats folded on the back of it. And Henry uh, went on from that. He went on and he made a lot of the alphabet. He made a Model B. He made a Model AC. He made a Model C. He made a Model D and a Model E. I haven't got any pictures of the Model Ds and Es, but the Model Ds and Es were actually delivery vans. Then he made a Model K. The Model K was an inline six dollar, 43 horsepower. It was a luxury car. Henry did not like it and he did not sell it very long because he was trying to get a car for everyone. And then he made a Model N. And I think when he made the Model N, that's when uh, people really started noticing what he was making and selling. But you know how people are, oh, I like a Model N, but I'd like to have the fenders connected to the running boards. I'd like to have the doors open on the side, etc. So Henry did what they asked when he made the Model R. Then he made a, S, a Model S and a SR Roadster. From 1903 to 1907, the Dodge Brothers actually built all of Henry Ford's engines and chassis. But Henry was trying to make a car for the ordinary person. Well, the Dodge brothers, they were stockholders and shareholders, and they were also selling him parts. So they were double dipping. And so uh, Henry was upset. So there was a big squabble between the Dodge brothers and Ford. Well, it ended up costing Henry Ford millions of dollars. But he kicked them out. In 1908, Henry Ford started making the Model T. He made the Model T from 1908 to 1927. He made over 15 million Model Ts. There's still over 200,000 Model Ts uh, registered today and running. That's not counting the ones that are sitting in a museum that's not registered. But Henry Ford came out, there are 20 horsepower engines. Uh, they uh, run about, today they run about 40, 45 miles an hour. Uh, they're uh, got some things about them that uh, if you uh, want to check the gas, you got to take the front seat uh, bottom out and you got to take the uh, gas cap off and you stick a stick in there. And you stick it in and tell you how many, how many gallon of gas you got. Uh, you can get 14 to 19 miles a gallon on the Model T. So that kind of give you a range of how far you could go. When you got ready to uh, check the oil on your car on today's automobiles, you go in there and you pull the dipstick out, wipe it off, stick it back in. If you want to check the oil on the Model T, you got to walk the passenger side, crawl underneath it, 
There's two pit cocks underneath the Model T. You open the top one. If there's no oil come out, you open the bottom one. If oil comes out, you got oil. If not, you got to add oil so you get uh, <laughs> enough to come out of that bottom one. And then you can go from there. The gas tank being underneath the seat created a problem. There was no recall at all. It's still the same thing today if you got a Model T. If you live in the Pennsylvania area and places like that, the law is still on the books. If you start up the hill, the gas will run from the carburetor back to the tank and the Model T will stall. So there's laws on the books today that states the person backing up the hill has the right of way. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, while we're talking about the Model T, in 1917, Henry Ford made the Model TT. There's one inside the uh, building there. And that is where the term pickup came from. Uh, what you would do is you would go and spend your five or $600 at the dealer. And three or four weeks later, you'd get a telegraph or a message in the mail, come down to the delivery station and pick up your 1,000 1200 pound crate so you would go and you would get your crate and when you would take it wherever you were going to uncrate it you would have to mount your wheels and tires on your uh, frame and you would have to put your wheel uh, put your fenders and your hood on then you would have to build your own cab and chassis like these two pickups in here every one of these are different because you could not buy them from the factory so you either had to build your own cab and bed you had to pay somebody to build it for you or if there was a wagon company around they would build you uh, a, a, a cab and a wagon bed but that's where the term pickup came from you had to go pay for it then you had to go pick it up some assembly required <laughs> but the model t uh whoop, uh Talk, talk a little bit more about it here in a minute, but after the Model T in 1927, Henry Ford, uh, he uh, was falling behind, and his son Estel started making the next automobile on plans. Well, the next automobile came out in 28 to 31, was called the Model A. There's one there in the, in the garage. It is actually a four-cylinder, 40 horsepower, It'll run 60, 65 miles an hour. The Model T people call those, those are the modern era cars because they're just like what we drive today. They got three pedals in the floor. They got a gas pedal. They got a brake pedal. They got a clutch pedal. They got a three-speed transmission in them, but they don't have any synchronizers in the transmission. So every time you go to shift the gear, you got to double clutch it so that you don't grind the gear. Uh, they also have a shatterproof windshield. Estel Ford actually the one that's done the design and stuff on that automobile, but Henry took the credit for it. But Henry did not drink liquor. He was a teetotaler. And so Henry didn't like the people that really liked the car, and it really made him upset because the moonshine people and the bank robbers uh, really liked the car. And actually, John Dillinger and Bonnie and Clyde wrote him letters stating, thank you for making us a car we can outrun the cops with. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, uh, why Henry Ford did not like that. But while we're talking about uh, going on up into 1932, in 1925, Henry Ford bought the Edison Lab that used to be here on this side of the property. And he moved it to Greenville Village. And in uh, about 1930, he sent his engineers over to, to the Greenville Village Edison Lab and said, I want you to design me a V8 engine and a chassis. Well, Henry Ford had already been working on what is called an X8 engine. It had four cylinders in the front and four cylinders in the back and an intake manifold uh, and exhaust connecting it. And uh, he didn't have success with it. So he went and he uh, had his engineers design the, the flathead V8. And 1932 it came out. 
it had a few little issues with it, but not nothing major. And that was one of the things. While he was down here on vacation over here in the cottage shop is where his garage was. He actually shipped one down here, and a guy named Carl Schwartz and him actually worked on it here on the property. After he got them available to go in engines, he actually drove two flathead V8s and two four-cylinders to disguise the sound of the V8 nonstop from Detroit to here, actually worked on them here on the property, drove them out here on McGregor Boulevard. The news press was all over it, but, not, but did not realize what he was doing until they were already back up north. But for all you Chevrolet fans, I hate to say it, you did not get a V8 Chevy until 1955 or the late 1954. So uh, Henry Ford was a, a way of, uh, beyond his time. He was also, in 1942, he built the first plastic type car. He made a soybean car. And him and a guy named George Washington Carver took uh, soybean uh, fibers and formaldehyde and stuff and actually built a soybean car over in the museum behind the Flathead V8. You see a picture of Henry Ford taking a sledgehammer, hitting the back of the car. Uh, that car is not around anymore. It has been destroyed, but that was one of the things that Henry Ford and George Washington Carver worked on. Also, George Washington Carver and Henry Ford worked on ethanol, and ethanol is here with us today. So back into the Model T here. In 1913, Henry Ford had been around to see a meat processing plant up in Chicago, and he saw how the meat moved around. In 1913, uh, he started his assembly line, and that is when you got a Model T in black and black only. Uh, he went from making a car from every 21 hours to every 93 minutes. Uh, Henry Ford uh, also, uh, the labor back then was $2.50 a day. Well, Henry was losing a lot of people. So he decided to pay his people $5 a day so wow. he could keep them. And that's what happened to Henry. He'd done that. But also while he was doing that, he started Ford Credit. Hey, you work for me, a dollar down, a dollar a week, you can have a Model T. Well, you can see today uh, that's Ford Credit still alive.